Hey guys, and welcome to Witch in the Bitch in a Podcast. I'm your host, Darren. And I'm Vicky. How are you all today? I'm just letting them talk or answer you. <laughs> I this tried is... not to say it, but it just, I can't not say it. You know, you could just say it as a statement. I hope you're well. Oh, uh, yeah. Rather than how are you? Uh, good point. That anyway. would make That would make more sense, wouldn't it? <laughs> Bloody air signs. <laughs> Anyway, guys, so uh, to reel it in a little, so we've got (laughs) today, we're going to be talking about the moon. So we're going to be basically Mm -hmm. taking you through what it is, what it isn't, what it isn't, why did I? What it isn't, what isn't the moon? What's not the moon? That could go for a little while. What the moon not is. (laughs) Um, I'm getting, I'm getting my Yoda on. Well, like I am wearing my my um Ewok t-shirt. Nub nub. If in doubt, nub nub. That's right. Um. For people that right. aren't watching this, they're going to be like, what the hell? Just what watch YouTube. You'll yeah. know what I'm talking about if you watch YouTube. Yes. Anyway, so I thought I'd okay. start us Let's off with some. <laughs> yes. We're going to start off with Dazzle's 10 fun facts about the moon. Oh, I love this. <laughs> I love this. What? Dazzle? I, I love Dazzle. I love Dazzle. And I love Dazzle's fun facts. Okay, Dazzle's Let's fun go. facts. Now, uh, for those go. that aren't watching, I did the little talking marks around fun facts because I find facts fun, but it's the same way that Sheldon Cooper finds flags fun. Because <laughs> I love fun with flags. It's so much yes. fun. See, vexicology. Fun. Did you know it's actually called vexicology and I studied that okay. when I was in school. Yep, I'm that guy. You- <laughs> I was about to say. I even oh, know what really? the name of studying flags is. Vexicology. Wow. Mm-hmm. wow. What's the study of the moon? Apart from moonology, <laughs> I don't know. It could be lo- lo- Luna. It'd be Luna. something with the word Luna. Yeah, it'd be Luna. Luna. Anyway, okay. Right. We digress. Anyway, what's your fun facts? What are Dazzle's fun facts? So, some key fun facts. The moon is 384,400 kilometers, which for North America is 238,855 miles from the you. Earth and has a radius of 1,737 kilometers or 1,079 miles. Wow. That's fucking huge. That is huge. <laughs> and far away. Yes. Like if you think about it, 384,400 kilometers, that's a long that's distance. That's a long, long way. Okay. Number two, it took the astronauts of the 1969 Apollo 11 mission, among them Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, and the five subsequent Apollo missions about three days to reach the moon. But in 2006, NASA's New Horizons probe, which passed the moon on its way to Pluto, managed to get there in just under nine hours. However, that was zooming by rather than having to slow down and aim for a landing. Um, wow. Yeah. I would, be, I would not be happy if I was on that original original. Three flight. days three to days. get somewhere. And they're like nine hours. I mean, Australians, we complain about oh. having to travel a whole day to get to Europe. Yes. But three days? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. Imagine sitting in the one spot for three days. Can you imagine what the jet lag would be? <laughs> Wait, do, you, do, you, do you get jet lag when you go to the moon? Say, I don't know. Do We should ask, ask Siri. Does Siri know the answer? <laughs> she might. Do you get jet lag when you go to the moon? Do you get jet lag when you She'll go like, to the uh, moon? She'll be like, well, considering no one goes there, we don't know. We don't know. Here we go. I'll see if I can ask it. <laughs> oh God, hey, Siri. Do you get jet lag when you go to the moon? Okay. I found this on the web for do you get jet lag when you go to the moon. Check it out. Ah, oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, I, will, I will read that later. <laughs> and I'll let you know. Okay, cool. <laughs> you know, <laughs> follow-up episode about us. that. <laughs> So number three, the moon is estimated to be around. I'll, I'll follow up that. Check the comments below. Okay, you're um, going to comment I'll, it? Okay. I'll, I'll comment it. Yeah, we'll okay, find cool. it. So What's the moon, your next fun fact? The, the moon is estimated to be around 4.527 billion years old, which is about oh. the same age as the Earth. Ooh. So people, when you talk about like history and you say, oh, dinosaurs came like... <laughs> You know, however many million years ago, that's a blip. That's a yeah. blip. That's a blip within a blip within a blip on the history of the earth. So we, our lifetimes mean nothing. Yeah. Like we literally are like this little dot. We're not even a dot. Not we're, even we're, a dot. We're the dot of a 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 dot. Like, yeah. like um, yeah. when you start to think about things in that kind of time frame, like it just suddenly it's like, oh, like my brain, you just can't even comprehend that no. kind of 
time and then how short a time we're actually really here for. Yeah, it's like a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, wow. So number four, yep. the most popular scientific theory about the moon's origin says that she was formed out of the debris thrown into orbit when the newborn Earth hit a planet around the size of Mars. Ooh. So she is our debris. She's our debris that, yeah. like, grew. When the planets collided, she's the result of the debris and forming her own axis and then her own gravitational force and then, you know, whatever. Wow. I'm not an astronomer, nice. but, but like, you know, I know oh, basic I astronomy. Yeah. yeah. It's fascinating. I love this stuff, yeah. Number five, the moon goes around the Earth as the Earth goes around the sun. And if, if any of our listeners are flat worlders, I'm going to slap you. <laughs> well, you never know. Or, or like, Have you, you know, seen it? <laughs> well, actually, on that note, though, uh, yeah. most of astrology is built around the basis of that we were the center and everything went around us. Yeah, that went around us. Even though now, uh, was it, who was it? Oh, God, I'm really bad at my, yeah. my Greek people. Um, I know it was one of them. It wasn't, was it Socrates, Aristotle? Nostradamus. Uh, no, it wasn't Nostradamus. No, <laughs> I'm talking about the one, who, the one who put us said that we are the center, that we are not the center oh. of the universe. The sun is. Oh shit! I should have fact checked yeah, this before. Doesn't matter. Moving on. We'll put that one in the comments too. Yep. Yeah, okay. Number six, the moon takes about thirty days to go through all twelve signs of the zodiac, spending just over two days in each sign. Ah. So I didn't it's realize that. Because obviously the zodiac is in correspondence yeah. to where it is in Earth, and that's why it goes like around us. Yeah, so it's we go around. Thirty days to go through all of the signs. Perfect. Um, there's a new moon and the, and then a full moon every two weeks. So the new moon happens followed two weeks later by the full moon, then two weeks later by the new moon, and so on and so forth. Yep. So every basically every two weeks. Yep. Number eight. Astrologers use the term lunation to talk about a new moon or a full moon. So, for example, we might say that the next lunation is the full moon in Aries. Oh. I didn't know this term. It's a fun fact, see? I didn't know that. Lunation. And it can be for either. It's whatever those big ones are. It's just whatever the big ones are. Um, Number nine, in astrology, the top things the moon rules are emotions, food, home, instincts, mother, needs, breasts, nurturing, femininity, the past, roots, safety, and the subconscious. Uh-huh. Yes. Which we're going to touch a lot more on all of these things and what deities play with all of these roles yes. and everything else like that as well. Yes, but I didn't um, realize food. food. I wouldn't have thought so either. Yeah, I didn't think about food. but I mean, emotions is a very obvious one. Hence the word yeah. like lunacy or lunatic. Those two yeah. words I know come from the word luna, which is the moon, yeah. because like people tend to lose their mind during a full moon. Mm-hmm. Um, fun fact, when I used to work in call centers, like we knew when a full moon was happening just by the reception that we're getting yes. from customers. Cause they'll just like yep. yelling and swearing and cussing and having hissy fits. I'm like, is it a full moon? And you'd look it up 99% of the time it was a full moon. Yeah. I've heard it's that crazy. before. And the same with like in ERs and, um, in hospitals and things like that as well. Full moon. That's when everybody's coming through. All the crazies moon. come out. Um, and then lastly, number 10, the moon triggers the planets as she goes around the zodiac and is thus a great astrological timer. Oh. I don't know enough about astrology to yeah, fact check that I'm one not. or to really go deeper on that, but I just. No, I'm a very base, base, base level of. Are you a basic witch? I'm a very basic witch when it comes to astrology. <laughs> By the way, guys, that's a play on words for basic bitch, but like basic <laughs> witch. <laughs> I can be that one too. <laughs> I love it. Okay, awesome. So hopefully you guys Ooh, found I like those. fun. Thank you. I learned some things there um, that I didn't know before. I'm now, quite special with this lunation. They actually came from this book, which is called Moonology, Working with the Magic of the Lunar Cycles by Yasmin Boland. So it's Ooh. one of those, Um, it's. I would say this is more in the woo-woo category of yep. books than witchy. Like, yep. you know, it's actually something that's more new agey, if anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, like it's classes mind, body, spirit, which is yep. more that modern take on things as opposed to a, mm. but it's still good. Like if someone's a beginner witch, it's a good way to start learning about it because it's, I've found that the information that's in is pretty sound. Yeah. I was going to say, I've, I've got that book too. And it's good also from like the astrological side of things as well. Like just to get a bit of a base idea of the moon in different signs and things like that, what that all all means. So yep. that's 
Well, speaking of which, then um, let's mm. let's talk about the different phases of the moon because I know that that obviously has a very big importance. Big yes. Importance. Yeah. Big for importance. very big important. Importance. Very important. <laughs> what we, you know we what create, I'm saying. We create new words all the yes, time. Yes, all the time. All the time. Yes. So the moon. She goes through phases and cycles, like all of us. <laughs> <laughs> I like how I like how you said she goes through phases. I know. And cycles. <laughs> I know. Yes, it's she funny, does. Isn't it? I often, but I do. I just say she without even realizing it. Um, and so I guess that's one thing as well. It is usually um, associated with the more feminine qualities, mm -hmm. the moon, and whereas the sun and the solar year is more associated with the masculine qualities as well. So that kind of goes on a little bit with like the subconscious and the emotions and the meanings that you said in your fun facts too. And I, th I think it's also interesting to note that, I mean, we're going to be touching on calendars next, but yeah. like it's interesting that cultures that were historically matriarchal used to use a mm. lunar calendar, whereas patriarchal society follows the solar calendar. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? interesting? Like how it all kind of lines up without mm. it even realizing, but yeah, so we've got, so we've obviously got the phases. So we start often at the new moon, mm -hmm. which is at the very beginning when we've got that little slither moving up into the full moon. So from there, we've got, that's our um, waxing phase, what we call mm -hmm. the waxing phase. And in between there, you've got the first quarter. You've also got balsamic moons you've got the gibbous you've got all of this other which is basically just different terms of getting slowly bigger is balsamic right? is waning oh balsamic's waning sorry i got the wrong one gibbous a, is the increase. yeah it's the gibbous yes, gibbous is the one yeah the gibbous moon is just before the full moon so i um so usually that's associated because it's growing you kind of look at it from that point of view of the that energy and that power is growing as well so it's usually associated with things of uh, like spell works or ritual works and things like that to do with growth mm -hmm. or um, planting those new seeds and things like that it's always to do with kind of that growth healing um, increasing in energy things that, that you want to kind of increase and then you come to the full moon which often really we have the exact date for the full moon but it's usually there's sort of three days there's one day either side that mm -hmm. we kind of have as well and then so I always sort of see we see the full moon as like that peak of power it's at its peak and then from there we start to wane and that's when we bring the balsamic mm -hmm. <laughs> we bring the balsamic maybe with a side of uh, a little bit of lime <laughs> a yep. of lime or something then we start to slowly and then so then the power is I guess one of a better word is starting to decrease we're starting to go into that more introspective side of things working mm -hmm. our way down back down to the dark moon or and then we start again at the new moon and keep going around so that's usually associated more with things like releasing um shadow work all of those kind of things or if you want something to get rid of like a bad habit all or of those cleansing kind of things, something cleansings all yeah. of those sort of things it's sort of that slow decrease and then off she goes again so it's a 28 day 28 day cycle is yes. it 28 or 29 I think it's got it's something a, in there. Yeah, yeah, like some there's a weird. point something in there because it doesn't quite line up with our days and things. But yep. yeah, roughly it's about a 20, 28 because you've got two weeks between each. Yep. Between so each. for those that's that... very, very quick. I was going to say that's a very thing. quick overview thing. But um, yes. for those that have no idea what we're, what we're talking about, excuse me. Um, so they say in, in most traditions of witchcraft is that, uh, like Vicky was saying, when you have the the ultimate point of the full moon and then the the dark moon which mm. we'll touch on that in a second actually the yes. dark moon versus new moon concept yeah but like it's so they say when you're trying to create something you want to do it just before the full moon but as close to it as possible astronomically yeah so the astronomical full moon not the that looks like it's full to my eyes yes because you may be yep. catching it after the full moon if you look at it with your eyes because like obviously our eyes can't detect the point zero 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 one percent of the <laughs> visibility you know yep. what i mean yeah um but Can actually like, touch it sorry you go i was gonna i was gonna say let's touch on that dark moon versus new moon concept because i know that that confuses yes. a lot of people yes so and it's very i think it's one of those things that it's different in different traditions and different people know so the way that I have was taught and the way that I knew is that the new moon is when it's that very first slither mm -hmm. so it's like if you had one of those apps it's like the one percent that's the new moon for me so then the dark moon is the day before that when there is no moon in the sky there's nothing it's that zero point and so for me that's the ultimate end of the uh, waning phase mm -hmm. so that's a really introspective time again like shadow work 
getting rid of things. It's a great time for meditation, self-reflection, um, contemplation, releasing. Um, but it's also a really good time as well. It can be that it's that dark goddess energy as well. Mm-hmm. So when you're using all of those kind of things. So um, divination, scrying, shadow work, releasing works, banishing works. And I mean, these can go through the whole waning phase as well, because if you kind of think of it that same way of that things that you want, what you want to kind of lose power in a Mm -hmm. way, want it to decrease. So yeah, that's how I sort of see it. So the new moon, often on an actual calendar, what what we'll call the new moon is actually, I usually do it the day before is the dark moon. There's a lot of controversy about where, what the day is and what it isn't, but yeah, and I think yeah, it's also that's like that's what I see it as on the calendar perspective. Like also, we don't. You, it's seldom do you find a calendar that calls it the dark moon because yeah, you won't people it. associate the words dark with evil or with bad. Yeah. And like for those that are interested in witchcraft or who even practice witchcraft of any nature, like we know that dark does not equal bad or does not equal evil. It's just, no. it's just as a society, everyone's focusing on love and light and all of the positive, yes. but they think that the positive comes from the light. But I mean, we've got an episode coming up soon. We've already recorded it, but it's coming up soon with Sasha Graham, where she actually talks about the fact that, um, the darkness is infinite and it just goes yeah. on and on and on and on and on. Yeah. Um, whereas the light creates shadows and, and it, it creates edges it creates and it comes to boundary. Yeah. So like, I actually love dark moon energy more than a full I moon energy. Too. Yeah. I'm, I'm a bit the same. And I, I use probably more the waning phase of the moon, probably more than the waxing phase or like from the new moon to the full moon. Um, because that's where it is. I think that's where a lot of, we find a lot of our gold and it's a lot of places where people don't want to go is in that subconscious and in that shadow work and introspective and just realizing that we are all light and dark. It's not good or bad or Mm -hmm. it's just about learning those different phases, life and death. It's that whole, whole cycle. Everything is, has that, that, um, opposites like the yin yang kind of effect of things so yeah i probably do too i actually use the dark moon more so than the waxing phase awesome I, yeah well i reckon we, we might even touch on some of i'd, I'd be keen yeah, to hear some saying, of your practices and what you do but maybe we'll come we'll circle back maybe we'll come show. back yeah let's come back awesome so um so then like Obviously, touching on another thing with the yeah. with the calendars. So, when it comes to the actual lunar calendar, um, so certain ancient civilizations all used yeah. a lunar calendar. For example, you had the Chinese, and the Chinese still do to this day. Their oh. year, Chinese New Year, is based off the lunar calendar. Ah, I never really. I was always trying to wonder. I never knew why, where, yeah. it, how it lines up. Because they say that. Oh, no, I don't remember the exact. Because I wasn't thinking of. We, we're going to talk about Chinese astrology oh. right now. <laughs> but I um, I know that with Chinese New Year, it's like the first new moon after the something. I can't uh, remember. There's like some way of measuring yep. it, which is why the date changes all the time. Yep, it's not that um, specific date. Yeah, it, it's got nothing to do with the solar calendar. That's why when like my husband, he's always like. Oh, we're both born in the year of the rat. I'm like, no, I'm the year mm. of the rat. You're actually the year of the boar or the year of the pig yeah. because you were born before Chinese New Year. So he's technically 1983 when it comes to the lunar year, whereas yeah. I'm 1984 on the lunar calendar. Yeah. I know that's very confusing for some people, but <laughs> just roll with it. Just just, just go with just it. Just roll with it. It's fine. Yeah. Um, mm. And then obviously then you also had um, similar calendars we use in places like Japan, Korea, Vietnam, because they all use the lunar calendar. So like, I know yeah. that they, they will follow the same, basically all the Eastern and Southeastern mm-hmm. Asian countries all support yeah. that lunar calendar. Cause it's all about the harvest and about the moons and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Then you had um, early Hindus used to talk about the lunar calendar. Mm-hmm. The very early Egyptians used the lunar calendar. Um, and in fact, the hieroglyph for month was a crescent moon. Oh, really? The hieroglyph for the word month was That's actually awesome. a actually even the word month is derivative of the word moon so it used oh, to of course it, it is too, yeah. so the, it used to be measured yeah. 13 months on yeah. the lunar calendar because it's 13 moons of the lunar calendar yeah. whereas we now talk about dates and months being different constructs anyway <laughs> And doesn't it make sense though? It makes sense, especially back when like you didn't have a calendar sitting up on your wall or you didn't have Siri to ask what where, what date it is. <laughs> <laughs> or, or if you get jet lag, if you go to the moon. But 
it was something that you can easily see like the the solar the the solar year is a, it the the differences are harder to see whereas you can absolutely see very easily the moon's phases and know where you're at and it would be a much easier way of being able to so much time. easier yeah. i wonder how many of us it would take to create an uprising where we all revert back to a lunar calendar oh, can you imagine awesome It'd be so oh. much better yeah. Anyway, then you also had early calendars of Chaldea, Babylonia, Mesopotamia, Greece, Rome, and the Celtic clans were also lunar. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I could go on and on and on and on, on. but basically just know this, that most calendars and cultures and everything actually preferred the lunar calendar mm. before we converted to the solar calendar um, because it was an easier way to measure and count and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but I was going to say, time. on that note, though, because I know that there's some traditions, even in witchcraft, that actually mm. name the different moons. Yeah, I know in um, some, like I've come from the Alexandrian tradition originally, um, but like in some of the British traditional witchcraft and things like that, they actually name them. So there's like a, a wolf moon, a harvest moon, blood moon. So the different months of the year had different moons. Um, I personally, we never really um, ascribe to it. I guess that's the word to mm -hmm. it because it just doesn't, it doesn't line up for us here in the yeah, Southern no. hemisphere. Like it just didn't work. Even flipping it like six months and stuff, it just still didn't because there's a lot of moons that like, for instance, a wolf moon, we don't really have wolves hanging around just no. like as frequently as they would. Oh, I wonder if we could just, <laughs> could we superimpose it and call it the dingo moon? Yeah, that's what I was thinking, maybe the dingo moon. But then it was also to do with like their patterns of um, like, I don't know, their mating patterns or migrations and different things like that. So it had different timings. Um, but yeah, so we didn't actually use it for that simple fact that in the Southern Hemisphere, which is a bit sad, we kind of don't have anything in the Southern Hemisphere that different moons it's a shame times. isn't it it kind of is like because yeah. there's, i think there's like a strawberry moon there's yeah i, can't I actually have a list here i was gonna say you've probably got a list there. i have got a list okay. so for those looking at youtube this is another book called moon magic it's by dj conway so this is one yeah. of my staples sadly though it is written with a very northern hemispherical reference yeah. point so we have january is technically the wolf moon which uh Actually, I, without reading the book, I'm not going to go into the detail of that. Um, yeah. February is known as the ice moon, which in the Northern Hemisphere, that's when winter is at its peak. That's the peak, yeah. Yep. Yep. Then that. in yep. March, you have the storm moon. Mm -hmm. In April is the growing moon. Uh, May is the hair moon, as in hay, hair, yeah. H-A-R-E, so rabbit hair. Um, June is the mead moon. Ooh. July is like the... that moon. The <laughs> it's all about beer. <laughs> That's right. The be mead moon. Then you have in July is the hay moon. Uh, like, hey, moon. Hey. I'm just kidding. Hey. hey, you? hey. Um, <laughs> August is the corn moon. Then yep. September is the harvest moon. October is the blood moon. Then end of October, they've put in here. Now, I'm going to circle back to this point. They put the blue moon mm. um, in end of October, early November. Then you have the snow moon in November and the cold moon in December. Ah. Uh -huh. So I, I guess it makes sense with their reference, but down here in the Southern Hemisphere, none of that makes sense because we're not known for growing corn or for mead or any of that. It's a very Euro-American Euro kind of centric yeah, concept. Because I think in some, some as well, they also call it instead of the blood moon, they have the hunter's moon, they have the oak moon, things like that. And like, we don't have them. We, we, I mean, we do have oak trees here, but they're not. Are and they native. native though? Yeah, I was gonna say I don't think they're, they're native. not a native. They've been they've been introduced, so that's why a lot of that stuff doesn't really sit for us. Mm. Even like we said, like even just flipping them six months, it still doesn't work because it's got those references of things that aren't here. Yeah. Which, so I get, go go go. I was gonna yeah. say we could always ask like yeah to our listeners, what do you have a particular list or correspondence or preferred I don't know, naming construct for the moon cycles mm. down here in the Southern Hemisphere, or even if you're not from the Southern Hemisphere, even if you're from the Northern Hemisphere, but you have a different way that's not yeah, either what I've listed local. or, yeah, something that's local to you or to your cultural background or to your... Yeah. See, so that's something would be really cool for here in uh, November. We get it because we have a lot of jacaranda trees here. So November is when the jacaranda trees start to blossom and it's just this purple sea all through November. So you mm -hmm. always kind of know that summer's coming when the jacarandas start to um, start to bloom. So things like that, you could add like different 
what happens, what's happening around. around and yeah, so yeah, let's see if we can make up a big list of different people's perspective. And maybe we'll we'll give ourselves some homework as well. I think. Yeah, maybe we will. Maybe we will. We'll. we'll I was going to say, I was going to say a very culturally appropriated term, then I won't. We will have a chat offline. (laughs) Um, (laughs) uh, We'll have a chat and we'll we'll see if we can come up with something. And maybe we'll post it in the comments and then that way we can engage with you guys and see if you have a particular. Something that happens in a particular month or at a particular time that might line up for you guys. So that would be awesome. We would love to hear what you what you come up with. So let's circle back to that blue moon concept. Mm, yes. Yeah, so the blue moon, because we've got one that's coming up very mm-hmm. soon, very, mm-hmm. very soon, actually. So there's actually a couple of kind of meanings for it, I mm-hmm. believe, isn't there? So one one of them is, I think that's probably the more common and, and uh, modern term, is when there's two full moons in a calendar month. Mm-hmm. which is why this Saturday this coming is, up is actually yeah. classed as a blue moon because of the fact that we already had a full moon on, I think it was the 2nd of yep. October was the last full yep. moon. And so the next full moon is on the 30th, 30th or 31st? 31st. 31st, of, files. Yeah. Yeah, 31st of October. So they're saying that Halloween, for those in the Northern Hemisphere, yep. is like so cool because it's on a blue moon blue and moon. it's a full moon and it's a Saturday. Like everything. And you, and you guys have just had daylight savings. So you get an extra hour or you're yep. about to have daylight savings. So you get an extra hour and all this kind of stuff, which is cool for you. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. But Not again, so cool for us. Even, that's right. It doesn't quite line up that way, but we've got Beltane and we've got everything as well. But there is actually another um, meaning. I guess, for want of a better word, with blue moon. I'll mm-hmm. let you explain that one because I know that one's a bit more to do with the seasons. And yeah. I believe that's kind of where it originated. And then this other one that I just mentioned then of having two in one calendar month. Exactly. So there's that phrase of once in a blue moon. Yes. Um, so it's actually saying that um, there are usually three full moons between an equinox and a solstice or vice versa, between a solstice and yep. an equinox. Yep. So sometimes, though, four full moons fall in a single season. Mm. So when that happens, the third of the season's four full moons is called the blue moon. I like it. So it's the third of the four Ooh. is called the blue moon. So it's like that second yeah, so last it's not one. Even, yes, it's, it's not, not even the last one. The last one, is it? It's not like no. the extra. It's the one before. Um, so that was the original definition of a blue moon, but then another has since been ascribed to being that it's the second full moon in the calendar month. Mm. So again, it goes back to which calendar are you using? Are you using the yeah. witch's wheel of the year and looking at solstices and equinoxes, or are you looking at um, the solar calendar and it being how many days in a month? Like, so it, it does. Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? Because I mean, is, are we looking more from the astrological term of looking at the stars where you can tell what time of the year is and like you said the equinoxes and things like that or our calendar i guess this is why we kind of wanted to create this podcast as well Mm. is that there's so much information out there that if you were to seriously sit there and like analyze it all you'd never do anything because everything contradicts everything else yes and it's like when's the perfect time am i supposed to look at you know based on the astrology of where i am or or where i'm where i want to be or you know what i mean am i watching this lunar thing where it's going in this Thing and, and it's just it gets too hard and I guess that's where it's really nice to just find out information mm-hmm. and then work out what resonates with you well because even what... then on those calendars a lot of the times it actually tells you when the moon like it will say first quarter it will have a time yes and the time might be like 6 35 a.m is when it's technically the first quarter that's right even though full moons and stuff like that will the do sun's the in the thing. sky then you know what I mean it's like the sun's up how can that be there yeah. you know so how it's like that, that whole confusion yeah, and that's it. And then, so which, so if a full moon is at seven thirty-five in the morning, mm-hmm. when do you kind of celebrate? Is it the night before or the the night of the morning? <laughs> we could just keep going down the rabbit hole with that one. But. Oh, and then don't even get me started on this lunar eclipse, solar eclipse, yes. and the naming conventions of those and what that does to the energy of the moon. Because even that. <laughs> That's a big one too. It confuses the hell out of me. Yes, it does. <laughs> because like technically, hang on, I'm going to say this wrong. I'm probably oh, going to say this go. wrong around. I think it's that technically a dark moon or new moon can also be classed as a solar eclipse because the moon is between the earth and the sun. 
but then a full moon because the moon is behind the earth's shadow could actually end up being a lunar eclipse so well there's a full moon the earth then goes in its shadow like it goes in the earth's shadow and then comes out the other side and that would then darken it for a brief moment and it, i can't remember there's some <laughs> my brain just go yeah Where? it's all about the Where placement of the earth and the sun and the moon and let's just there's an eclipse <laughs> right an eclipse. and the eclipses do other things i was gonna say it has different energies and that's it and i guess it isn't in the end that's what it's about like tuning into those energies mm-hmm. just because it says something in a book or just because it says something in this go sit out find find what it is what what does it feel like for you what mm-hmm. how, what's your energy like at that time because i personally i love i love eclipses not that I've yes. gotten to see many in my lifetime, but I'm one of those people who will subscribe to like, you know, when you can watch the eclipse online mm. in whatever country it's going to yeah. be best viewed. And I sit there and I just here. watch, and I'm just staring at the screen. You, you, all you're watching is the moon going in front of the sun and it is so fucking slow, <laughs> but I just sit there glued to the screen watching it. And I'm like, waiting, what am waiting. I waiting? What, what am I expecting that once it happens, that there's going to be like the sky is going to open and angels are going to come <laughs> down or I'm just watching it. Wow. It's going to start or something. Who knows? Yeah. But it, it's exciting. It's it exciting to, to honor those it things is. and to pay attention to them and stuff. It is. It really is. Oh, um, and something else I forgot to, I, I forgot to mention as well is that mm-hmm. sometimes people also call a black moon as well, which is the opposite of a blue moon. I see. I've never found any historical law this so mm. who knows i think it might be a mod- more modern kind of contract but it's basically when um two dark cycles of the moon so either a dark moon or new moon when there's two of those in a calendar month oh yeah i've never heard of that yeah i only honestly i'm I'd now gonna look for one it. yeah honestly i've only ever heard of it in the last few few years so like it's not necessarily been anything about my practice but it's just a little bit of a fun fact a visual fun fact. <laughs> visual, Vicky, visual, Vicky. <laughs> but she's on my visual. Yep. Yeah. Um, so maybe have a look at that. I'm going to because I yeah. love I love dark moon energy and all that, and I didn't even know so there's a black I. moon. There's a black moon. Yes. Yes. <laughs> this is not so to sorry, take I away. Don't... This is not to take away from anything, but I I almost want to say mm. black moons matter. <laughs> Because, like, as in, we, we forget about the black we moon. We do, we do. Why do we always because focus on is. the white moon, meaning everybody, the full moon? Yes, and everybody always focuses a lot on the full moon mm-hmm. or even the and the new moon, but it's those darker energies that always get. I can't help but wonder whether that is because of society's obsession with focusing on the light and focusing on the yeah. white. That's because what I wonder. Light about. plus white does not always equal right. <laughs> As cheesy and oh, Dr. Seuss as that was. I was about to say. Um, because I, I, I'm obsessed with dark energy and black energy. And like, to me, I think we, and especially now culturally, globally, we're mm-hmm. focusing on a lot of this, the things that get swept under the rug. Uh, yeah. That's uh, you right. know. And I mean, and that's what we wanted to talk. That's the whole reason we wanted to kind of create this podcast as well, is to talk mm-hmm. about things that are often. Hush, hush. Not, yeah. Behind closed doors. Secret I mean, that's squirrels. what the is. Really? Mm. So I guess this brings me on to another topic. Yes. Um, so when it comes to deities associated with mm. the moon, because yeah. that's another thing that so many people, and this is the thing, like, guys, why we bring up all these topics of conversation is not to say we are the all-knowing, all-supreme no. Wikipedia or Wikipedia <laughs> or anything no. else. We are far from it, guys. <laughs> We're just a couple of nerds who read a lot. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but it's about, and the more that you, you know, you can then spark your own research and spark yep. what, what kind of works for you, what doesn't work for you, what might be part of your path, what might not be. Exactly. So, I and mean, you may, and I would love to hear if people do things differently. I would really love to hear that as well, because that's how you learn. That's how you grow. And things. But it's like the next episode that we're releasing on Saturday, which is all mm. going to be about, as I've now called it, oh God, I don't even know how I'm going to say it. I can't it. remember how you I said it. Um, it was like Bella Ween Haim. Yeah, Bella Ween Bella Haim, Haim which like, is the combination of Beltane, <laughs> Halloween, and Samhain. But I'm saying Sam Hain because to say Bella Ween Win sounds weird. It does, yeah. The Bella Ween Win doesn't yeah, work. Yeah, no, no, Ween no, Win. It doesn't no. work. No. But basically, the whole Beltane versus Samhain versus Halloween and the fact that we're in the Southern Hemisphere. So while the rest of the world is celebrating Halloween and trick or treating, everyone here is talking about phallic things. 
Yes. And and saying, let's <laughs> let's all about Beltane. And I'm like, but I want to do trick or treating with all stuff. the kids. So yeah, but we'll touch on that on Saturday's we'll episode that, yes. anyway. Yeah. But it's so it's that, that whole thing up. of yeah, literally, it's our next episode. But like it's it's that whole contention point about like, you know, just because someone else says something doesn't mean you have to follow it. You do what's right for you, boo-boo. Right. Yep. Yep. I've got nothing. That was brilliant. <laughs> if, if it works for you, then do it. Yeah, um, because you, know, you, you could it. go down all these traditional paths and like be, you know, I was going to say inaugurated. That's the wrong word. Initiated <laughs> into a specific <laughs> inaugurated. You could be initiated into a particular path, but that doesn't mean that their way is the only way. No, that's right. That then becomes dogma. And for yes. me, this is a spiritual belief system. So it needs to be based on my personal experience with said belief system. Yeah. And I think that's what it comes down to is that we've got to remember that this is a sacred practice sacred personal practice Mm -hmm. it has to be what resonates with you and and you can't just follow something just for the sake of it it does need to be what works and resonates for you so take different ideas try them out if it doesn't work then don't do it but just find your own yeah otherwise it's just a whole pile of nub nub (laughs) it is it's a big pile of nub nub (laughs) Sorry, guys. I'm referring to my T-shirt again. I know. Ewok. It's a I cute know. little Ewok it dancing, is, and it just says really "nup nup." Anyway, it's really cute. All of the people who don't watch Star Wars or any of that will be like, "What? Why are you talking about? Yeah, anyway. We're talking about the moon." Is that? I told you, we're a couple of nerds. Like, you know, yeah. we, we like these references. <laughs> That's it. All right, let's get back to deities. Okay, so deities or deities, deities. See, deities, I say deities. deities. I say deities, but then I always say things wrong. Anyway, <laughs> it's not wrong. It's just different. 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 That's our motto. It's not wrong. It's just different. Different. That's it. That is so, correct. I'm going to break it down for you guys. Let Beautiful. me break it down. So there's actually, hmm. So this is where it gets a little confusing because you have the ultimate uh, deity that most cultures observe is the triple goddess. Yes. Because the triple goddess is literally the crescent moon, the full moon, and the waning crescent moon. Yes. So like the two crescents so and the like, full moon. Yeah. So you've got yeah. the maiden mother crone. Energy. Yes. So, so energy. we'll talk about those first because these appear in different cultures. And then we'll talk about specific moon deities, deities, yes. um, specific to different cultures. So triple goddess in Greek system was Artemis, Selene, and Hecate. Yeah. Is that how you say it? Hecate? Hecate. 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 Okay. Here's another thing. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not a good one when it comes to all of these random words. I know. Um, see, this is the thing. Yeah. So they're beautiful. Because, so that's that epitome of like the maiden, the mother, and the crane. Which is Artemis, Selene, yeah, and Hecate, Hecate. respectively. Then yeah. in Roman, you have Diana, Luna, and Trivia. Oh. So that's the three. That's the triple goddess in Roman. Yeah. Um, in Egyptian, you have Isis as the moon earth and underworld with her husband osiris oh. is what they refer to as the triple goddess as the triple goddess yeah um in sumerian or middle east and you have uh, i'm gonna screw this one up inanna, inanna as queen of <laughs> as queen of heaven earth yep. and later the underworld yeah in norse mythology you have the norns which is the weird sisters uh, I, yeah uh, I'm going to screw these up as well. So there's like <laughs> okay, right. order, order, verdandi, and skuld. <laughs> <laughs> if you speak these languages, please correct me. Please tell us how they please. are actually. Because so they're your past, or, present, or, and future. Order, verdandi, and skuld. Does that sound? <laughs> I feel like I'm being the <laughs> Swedish chef. It does a little bit, no, but no, body, body, but it sounded body, right. Body. It sounded, okay. it sounded good. That's that's how I would say them. Order, order. order. I don't really know, hundred percent. That's how I, <laughs> how I say. It. And the weird, the weird or word is sort word. of like word is the threads that we're all linked to, and they're the weavers, weavers of the threads. So they're the past, ah. present, and future. So they're the weavers of time, almost. So that's I love the, that. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Um, symbology there so it's that yep we all and have and the the one that i'm going to screw up as well is uh the celtic system yeah i'm never very good with these ones either <laughs> so you have morgan which is as anu babd and yep. matcha yes I and then you have and then you have brid as healer poet and smith 
Yeah. So that's also, she's often also uh, known as Bridget or yep. Breed. So it's the same, but it's just known in lots of different things. And she's also um, become a saint as well. They oh, yeah, Saint Bridget. Saint Bridget. Yeah. So yeah. they actually, um, and there's the chalice well. Is it the chalice well? I'm trying to think her sacred place. But there is actually a Bridget's Flame as well, just a little tidbit for you, that has been um, going for 2,000 years or something like that. What? Yeah, that they are constantly attending to, to the flame of Bridget. That is cool. Yeah, and it has a lot of healing properties. Do you know where that is? I think it, I don't know if it's Chalice See, Well. if I you're going to throw a I fact know. out I've there. I've got to do it. I've got to have it backed up. I think it's Chalice Well, but it is actually, there is a place, it's Bridget's, and it's actually, um, and you can talk to this, there's sisters and things there that are actually now it's from St. Bridget, but they actually still both um, talk about both sides of her, from the That's pagan so cool. side of thing as well as the, yeah, which is really cool. So That's awesome. That's another I, 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 I wish there. I could. I wish I was better at speaking Celtic, I know, Gaelic, whatever. I'm not whatever. very good with that either. Yeah. But I find that the de- deities, the gods, goddesses, I find they're quite, um, <laughs> they don't mind too much. No, no. <laughs> as they, long as, as the long intent's as, there. Exactly. As long as you're not saying, hey, asshole. <laughs> yeah, that's right. As long as you're respectful. <laughs> yeah. I think we're pretty good there. So now moving on to the actual moon goddesses and yes. some gods. Because it's mainly god. moon goddesses, but there are some gods. Yeah. So obviously in Greek, we've already mentioned them, but we have Artemis, Selene, and Hecate. So yeah. um, respectively as Artemis being the huntress. Yes, the huntress. So she's seen as the maiden, mm-hmm. free, wild, completely in control of her own destiny, I guess, for want of a better word. And then you have... Um, well, I don't know much about Selene. She's not one of the ones that I tend to I, review yeah, that I often. No, I don't know a lot about her either, apart from her name. <laughs> but I know that... <laughs> and then it's a very... Um, but she is uh, seen as a motherly figure. So there's mm. that mother aspect to it in the full moon. And then there's a... Bit. But a lot of witches actually do honour Hecate because yes. she's considered to be the... Well, wasn't she the first witch or something? I'm pretty yeah. sure I read that somewhere or... or yeah, that from in some, some... Myths, she's sort of the queen of witches in some some sort of... Uh, mythos I guess Mm -hmm. Um, but then if you actually look into her a little bit further as well she's actually a triple formed goddess herself so it's only now in later times that we've kind of associated her with the crone energy but she's also um, very much associated with the maiden and especially the mother energy because she's also a protector of children and childbirth Ah. and things like that as well so there is she's got a whole other aspect to her as well that brings it in so which is very I, knew, I guess for the moon i knew there's a reason why i should do this podcast with you because you're teaching me so <laughs> much right now <laughs> um then obviously respectively we have in the roman system there's um diana which yes. is the equivalent of artemis there's yes. luna which is the equivalent of Selene, and then there's hecate as well so they share yeah. hecate across the two yeah and there's usually a lot of crossover in the roman and greek yeah like and a lot of similar. it, a lot of the I times mean, it's just a naming convention. Yeah, that's it. It's just a different way. Like of Mars, saying. Aries, Jupiter. Yeah. Oh, wait. Jupiter, Zeus? Oh, God. Oh. Let's not go there. Got me on that one. I can't remember. I can't remember. I can't remember. Doesn't matter. <laughs> um, okay. So then in the Egyptian system, we have Isis, Bast, and Hathor. So they're mm. the um, moon goddesses, which I, I love Bast or Bastet. Yes. I love the energy of Bast. Um, I've I actually do got work with her a lot. Funnily I, enough, for being crazy cat lady. <laughs> I, I love like so. I've actually got there's you can't see them. They're up high on the top of my shelves yeah. up here. But I've actually got a couple of statues of Bastet because I, I I've always been attracted since I was a young kid to black cats in particular. Yeah. Um, and we actually used to have one when I was a kid. But yeah, I just love that whole cat energy of Bastet. Mm. And actually, cats were revered in um, Egyptian culture. So yes. there were so many cats running rampant in ancient Egypt and stuff. Well, so they say, I mean, yes. no one knows. I was going to say, we don't never really know, but. So they say. Um, but but anyway. we have, here's a fun fact for you. We have a black kitty now and we called her Luna because we got her on a full moon. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> yeah, we were going to call her Celine for a little while because that was the moon reference as well, mm-hmm. but. She's Luna now. So. You like a Luna, okay. Yeah. Um, and then there's actually a couple of gods in Egyptian um, mythology, so moon gods. So there's Thoth and Knoshu. 
So they've apparently been linked to the moon as well at some point. I guess, I suppose, I've, I've never, I haven't worked with them like in a moon sense, um, mm. especially not the second one I had. I don't really know much about him at all. But Thoth, I guess, comes from as well that subconscious aspect because wasn't he the the god well. of the mysteries and all that kind yeah. of stuff and the knowledge and knowledge and wisdom and all of those kind of things so i can see how you would sort of bring that in together but is now i know actually i'm not even going to touch that because i was gonna say is, is thoth the one with the the long you see the ibis looking ibis, long I long think. beak one yes, yes that's I'm him right sure he's the okay. ibis yes yeah yeah. I'm not fully across my Egyptians. I do like a few of them, but yeah, not yeah, fully across I'm, them. I'm almost 100% sure he's the Ibis. I, th- I thought so too. Yeah. Um, then for Sumerian or Middle Eastern, we have Inanna again, yeah. Astarte, and Ishtar. Ooh. Uh, quite... I know, yeah, I like those names because they're also part of um, a few of these names that you'll hear as well are also a part of like the goddess chart that's often chanted. Oh, yeah. As well. So you'll kind of feel here if you familiar faces for one of a better word with that and um with Inanna um there's a story with her Inanna and Ishtrigil I'm never very good at saying her name that's her sister Mm -hmm. and Inanna is the queen of heaven and so then she uh descends into the underworld um and then she dies and is reborn um as the ruler of both the underworld and heaven but she's got to go through all these trials to get there so that's kind of I think where her aspect of it comes into that's Play a little bit fascinating and it's then a really great story they also have a god named sin so he's apparently linked yeah, to the moon either do no, i this is like literally okay. giving me all these extra points of yeah. what we should research for future episodes which is awesome which is yeah. great um and then oh the celtic ones again so there's the, <laughs> <I know. laughs> if you're irish descent or celtic or scottish or gaelic or any of those things please just correct please, me just, yeah just so how to say them. there's i'm gonna say arianod yeah, I really uh, don't know. Ar- Ar- I've, Ar- I've honestly never I'm sure known. it's pronounced with lots of silent letters and letters yeah. that don't even exist there, like like Samhain, Samhain, yeah, Samhain. I'm sure there's another way of pronouncing it, but anyway. Then there's the Keridwin. Yep, Keridwin. Keridwin. The her beautiful big cauldron of uh, where everything comes from. Okay. And then there's Morgan. Yes. As opposed to the Morrigan, who I yes, believe so is I'd- different. Yeah, I don't same? know a lot about. Uh, that's where I get a little bit confused. I know it's about the Morrigan, but I don't know anything about Morgan. Because mm, the Morrigan, she was the goddess of the underworld, isn't she? The Morrigan. Yes. Yeah, so, she's got under very underworld and of battle and. Um, isn't she also ravens. symbolized by like yeah ravens and crows and all that kind yeah, of like yeah the crows black and energy. ravens yep. Loves yeah loves it very very fascinating <laughs> but yeah I don't know a lot about Morgan. So and if you're trying are, to oh. There you okay. go. Oh, and then there's the other one because we mentioned a little bit about Norse before as oh, well. Oh, yes. There's yes, yes, yes. Um, Manny. I don't know if that's how you say it correctly, but there's the story of Manny and Sol, who are um, sister, brother and sister, and they're the sun and the moon, and they're being chased They in their chariots. They're being chased across the sky by um, by wolves, and so that's why they change what's why the the phases change so that's a very condensed and probably a little bit bastardized version of the story but that's the kind of but see i love all these like folkloric like, oh, mythological too. stories and stuff because like some people take them and they go oh, it's just all bullshit because it's just like some story yeah. but it's you don't read the story for literal meaning yes it's that the belief systems of the ancient civilizations are hidden in between the layers of the yeah. stories that's so right. it's like they use these stories to explain why things happen because that shows what their belief system was. It doesn't mean that they literally thought that there's a giant wolf chasing the moon and the sun. No, that's on the earth. That's right. It's the way, and and think most things were an oral tradition as well. So that's how things were passed down was through stories because you can remember stories much easier than just like rattling off facts and and things like that. Stories were how how things were um, sent down through the generations and things like that. And, and an interesting one with that one as well is that um, in Norse, so Sol is actually the female, is the sister, and Manny is the male. He's, he's which is the, the opposite moon, to most which, other yeah, traditions. Yeah, which is opposite for most, so, which is also really interesting. Now, for any people out there that are chronic fact checkers, 
Yes. Um, so obviously the list that I've given you is not an exhaustive list, but no, I pulled that one right. from The Outer Temple of Witchcraft by Christopher Penchak. So that's where I pulled that list from. Um, if you want more information, there's plenty more in there. Um, but as I said, it's just the start. It's the tip of the iceberg, guys. Like yeah. anytime we touch a topic, we don't profess to be experts. We're just kind of touching on it mm. to yeah, hopefully right. lead you on a, your own journey of discovery. And that's right. So you find what kind of, ooh, when you're kind of listening to things that has that kind of, oh, something sparks there, and then mm. you kind of follow that down and research it and see what finds what works. So I have to ask you then, Vicky, are there yes. any of those goddesses or gods that you use in your pantheon? Yes, I do work with Hecate a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's probably one of the, um, probably the most out of all of those that I work with. Mm -hmm. Um Otherwise, I just kind of also work with the moon as just an energy of its own, yep. like as an archetype, I guess, for want of a better word. Um, with that, so there's also uh, the May full moon is often um, around Hecate. There's actually because it's also one of her sacred days as well, links up with there. Um, and there's a lady, what's her name? Sarita Diesti. How she started this worldwide thing where. Um, she has like everybody does the same little bit of a ritual at the same thing at the same mm -hmm. time for the full moon, which is pretty cool as well. Um, but then I kind of, like I said, I kind of work with it more as just a general energy yeah. as well for me, I think, more so than anything. Yeah, I think the only real moon deity, deity, deity uh, that I really have ever kind of been drawn to has always been Artemis. Yeah. I don't know why. It just... That's the one that always stuck out to me. And that was the one that I. She's pretty kick ass. Oh, yeah. Like, she's Absolutely. pretty cool. She's got her bow and arrow going around. She's running around. She's like the huntress and the protectress of of the wild. Like. Which anyone that knows me knows that I'm. That's right up my alley when it comes to fantasy fiction <laughs> and the games that I play on PlayStation and that's anything right. that has that kind of huntress element to it. That's why one of my friends recommended that I play the game called Horizon because it's like yes. you literally just huntress with this kick ass bow and arrow. Yes. Um, so, like, I love all that kind of just that archetype, I guess, yeah. of the Huntress energy, which is interesting because I'm a male, but like, I just, I just love her energy. But more recently I've actually been, not that I've done enough research or played around with it more, but as I've kind of grown and evolved as a witch and as my, I guess, beliefs have kind of evolved as well, yeah. or not beliefs, but more focus. Like now I tend to focus more on the dark and on yeah. you know the darker side or the shadow work yeah. and all that kind of stuff so it's only recently that i've started to really have hecate and the morrigan on my radar mm -hmm. um yeah because it, when that, i was that's... younger it was always focusing on the light and the full moon and the crescent moon and the create 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 now i'm like banish 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 yeah. banish. <laughs> that's it. let's go into the deep and dark stuff now like the, where all the work is but that that's really true because when you normally think of moon goddesses and things like that it's usually more the ones that are associated with the crescent moon or the full moon that are like the most for want of a better word popular or, or in modern times mm. but um yeah we seem to go with the others which we kind of i guess we didn't touch on that as well as that there's all those dark goddesses of the dark goddess energy as well like carly is another one that sometimes we'll work with around the dark moon as well i almost i almost feel like we could energy. do a specific episode just on the underworld yeah the underworld and, 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 and the underworld gods, gods and goddesses because even though we've got them in the moon cycles but then they're, they're a whole nother category on their yeah, own because some of them aren't even related to the moon no, that's and you have it, like but it's Persephone just that kind of and energy. Hephaestus and all of yeah. them. Wait, is that right? Persephone and Hephaestus? Oh, I'm not sure about the second one, but Persephone definitely. Oh, I, I think I'm. I, I think you that... might be mixing two. No, but Hephaestus, isn't that the god that is the consort Hades. to Persephone? Hades. Hades? But is yeah. that is Hades and Hephaestus the same, or are they? They different? probably are. Yes. Oh, that's the thing. So I know something that gets so confused. Yeah, they get too confused. But yeah, it was uh, Hades and Persephone mm. and her mother Demeter. Yes. And, and which is where the seasons come into because she cries for the time when her daughter's away and everything goes barren and dry and nothing grows. But then in the springtime when um, Persephone comes back to Earth from the underworld, that's why we have the spring and everything pops back up again because she's happy. Because Demeter's an Earth goddess. <laughs> in a nutshell, guys. In, know, a nutshell. in a nutshell. Like very quick version. And so, so then there's also like um I guess the moon can also have so many other 
layers to it. Like you said, like you can um, put it over that lens, the underworld, dark goddesses and things like that as well. So to circle back in, in summary, so is there any, any other practices or whatnot that you do around the yeah, moon specifically moons. or that you want to share with people? Like what's your personal practice look like when it comes to moon energy? So for me, I treat sort of the, the new moon as that little beginning of like planting seeds and things that you want to grow. Mm-hmm. So it might be something where I'll sit down and maybe do something as simple as like um, goal setting and intention settings and have that kind of intention. You may want to, maybe sometimes I'll draw a card or something like that to have that increasing energy. So it's all those things to do with fresh starts, growth, healing, those kind of things. So, which can often just be me lighting a candle, sitting at a little altar, um, coming up with those things and having that intention and that reflection and, and those kind of things. So everything you want to grow in prosperity. So that's usually the sort of workings that I do at that time of the uh, moon cycle. And then at the full moon, I always still see it as, I know a lot of people now, it's quite a, a thing that it's a time of releasing and all of those sort of things. Whereas I just see it as it's that peak of power and it's actually almost like a thank you kind of time, a time mm, of gratitude. gratitude. Yeah. yeah, like it's you're at that peak. If you need to do something at that time, you can and you can the energies can go either way. But I see it a bit more as like a gratitude kind of time as well. So I usually put out my crystals and get some moon water and all of that sort of stuff as well. Um, but something else I do with the moon cycles is um, I also do yoga because I'm a yoga teacher as well. And I love yoga. I do um, moon salutations. I'll go outside and do them on the lawn, looking overlooking the moon and all those sort of things. That's, I feel like we like could, that. I feel like we could almost touch on that, like in a whole episode about yoga yeah. and about uses of yoga. Cause I know I only know the sun salutations, but I feel like yes. the moon salutations are a whole nother topic. Yeah, it is. And it's just got that different kind of energy. It's that more, again, like we'll be talking about the yin and yang, it's got that different energy. So it's about bringing that slower, a bit more introspective time um, as you go move through them. So that's kind of, and it's a lot of times it's a way you can also use your body as it doesn't have to always be words or actions and things like that. You can actually use your body as a way of, um, I don't know, not an offering that doesn't sound very good, but um as a, a bit of spell work. I know, what, you mean. I know, <laughs> I know what, you mean. what I'm trying to say. I'm like, I'm just digging a hole. It's just getting deeper and no, deeper. No, no, no. It's okay. We're called witching yeah. and bitching. There's We're no topic off. There's no, no that's topic true. Off, off the cards. Off there, know. yeah. And so then if we move into like the waning phase, I then start to use that for releasing, for self-reflection. I Around the dark moon, that's when I sit down and I'll do some shadow work or contemplation. Um mm. You can also, through the waning phase, I do a lot of stuff for protection or banishing or releasing those kind of practices. Um, and, yeah, that's when I start to work with some of the dark goddess energy a little bit as well, that underworld journey. So I like it. Yeah, so that's kind of some of the stuff I do, just little bits and pieces. And one thing that I've found that's been one of the best things for me to really connect with that energy is actually literally to just go outside and have a look at where the moon is every night. I mean, it's not always to go, but each night before I go to bed, I let my dogs out so they can go to the toilet. And, but it's beautiful because it's exactly the same time every night. So I look out there and have a look at see where the moon is. So now I know that the full moon is usually visible at the front of my house and the dark moon or the first crescent is actually visible at the back of my house at that time. So start to kind of tune in with those energies of where things are um, in respect to yourself and how you feel. Another great thing to to do as well is to chart have the chart of a moon cycle and then just every day write how you feel what you're feeling what you've been thinking how your energy levels are and things like that and you might start to see a few patterns start to emerge as you start to kind of attune to those energies a little bit so that's something else I do as well trying to just attune to that energy how about you um well I'm a Cancerian so I (laughs) my my ruling planet is the moon and right. my ruling stone is the moonstone. So I'm a big ass crybaby <laughs> every full moon. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's like I, I'm very much a, like, well, actually, no, the old me, teenage me, witchling me was very much before I kind of knew all these things about the yeah. moon and what it does to us. And, and like some people are like, oh, as if that's all a whole, like, what's the word I'm looking for? It's all crock of shit. Whereas I'm like, no, it actually makes a lot more sense than you realize because the moon actually has a pull, a a gravitational pull on 
liquid because obviously yeah. the moon controls the ebbs and flows of the tides yeah. and when the moon is usually on a full moon is when you have a king tide which is when the water comes in extra high for tidal estuaries yeah. and stuff like that um and so it has a similar effect on our physiology because obviously we have a lot of water that's through our system and not just water but also the any fluids really that are yeah. flowing through our system so that's on right. a full moon it tends to make them stir up a lot more um and i know that i i can never sleep on a full moon yep ever which yeah. is i mean when you're a witch it's kind of handy to not be able to sleep on a full say, moon because you can right. do your ritual work i was about but, to say um, you should go out you don't have to try to stay up and and keep everything going yeah but it's um so for me it's mainly around like once i recognized and i understood now i will notice my patterns mm -hmm. like my yeah, energy right. like my emotions all that kind of stuff and i'm like mm, hang on a second and then i'll quickly check to see what the phase of the moon is like, mm, I knew it we're there coming we up go. to a full moon there it is yeah. and once I'm aware of it and put it into my conscious mind then I'm like it's a full moon yeah do not react that's do right you react. can accept you can accept mm -hmm. that come from a place of acceptance or responding rather than reacting it's the same thing as when we have like because currently we have uh Mars in retrograde in Aries mm. and the uh moon is in retrograde no Mercury is in retrograde in uh I can't remember okay. some sign insert yeah. sign here. I can't remember. I'll put it in the comments <laughs> if I look it up, but so having a Mercury retrograde and a Mars retrograde at the same time, like now I literally just go like I said to my husband, if we're arguing stuff, I'm like, we don't need to have this argument. It's just Mercury retrograde. It's fine. Yeah. It's okay. It's all right. We don't need to. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. I blame Mercury retrograde for everything. Yeah, by the way, guys. That's right. <laughs> like if, if I have technology issues, it's Mercury retrograde. I if I have email does. issues, it's Mercury retrograde. Yeah, I think yeah. we all do. <laughs> it's just like, it's now my new scapegoat to life. It's Mercury retrograde. And when it's not, I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh, that means I did that. Mine. I was going to say self-responsibility. <laughs> um, but no, the only other practice that I really do around the moon, other than obviously knowing my emotional center yeah. Cause I tend to do a lot of, um, so dark moon, like you, I do a lot more mm. banishing work, shadow work, um, yep. shadow journeying work, um, any form of like going in and ripping yeah. stuff out and you know, all of that, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, that's yeah. all around the dark moon, uh, yep. new moon. I'm like you, I tend to do a lot of goal setting. Um, yep. so people are like what you set goals every month. Yeah, I'm a life coach. I would kind of expect myself to walk my talk and write goals every yeah. month. Otherwise, yes. how can I tell my clients to do it? Um, but also around the full moon in particular, I tend to always do divination. Yep. So I love pulling tarot cards on a full moon. And I'm so excited, even though we're in the Southern Hemisphere and it's Beltane. For me, I still know that somewhere in the earth it's Samhain and it's Halloween and the veil is thin on both of those holidays anyway. I was going to say the veil is thin both ways. So. Yep. And so I'm going to absolutely be doing some, um, like, because I'm going to do one of those, uh, I don't like using this word because I don't think it's very PC, but calling it a dumb supper. Yeah. Well, um, that's it. That's its name. It's that's its name. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what's called. But I know that yeah. there's, but actually, no, I actually listened to a pod, not a podcast. There was an episode at gather the witches because I've been yeah. watching a lot of those videos and they talk about an Irish supper. So oh. an Irish supper is the opposite to a dumb supper. It's where it's loud. There's a lot of alcohol. There's a lot of talking. And because this particular person, uh, oh, temperance, temperance, someone or that can't remember her full name right now. I'll look it up because I'll talk about it more so in the next episode. But um, she does an Irish supper, which is where it's all about being happy and lively and rather than a dumb yeah. supper of sitting around in silence. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's not quite the same. I don't, I don't really do silence. I was about to well. say, I would actually like to see that. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> I was going to say, good luck saying goodbye to everyone when I'm sitting here silently. <laughs> no. well, I guess I'm saying goodbye now. <laughs> in, all, in all honesty, guys, I hope no. you've enjoyed today's lesson. Um, yeah. As I said, we only wanted to scratch the surface on this topic. Obviously, we could jump yeah. into a lot deeper, which we will do. But please let us know in the comments what things that we spoke about resonate with you guys. Mm. What do you want to hear more about? Where do you want us yeah. to take this journey? Um, I did put a post up uh, today, actually, which was on our page, asking you guys, like letting you know which episodes are coming up and asking what you want to hear about. So I know that uh, we had someone who asked us if we could do an episode on herbs or Ooh. herbs, which I know is right up your alley. Herbs. It is. It is. And I'm not talking about these ones. No, no, no. No, I don't know. Oh, by the way, guys, I'm doing the sign as if I'm smoking a joint. Um, yeah, not those herbs, the other herbs. Um, yes. 
and they also asked if we could do an episode on crystals or Christology. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, we want to know from you guys, yeah, what, what do you want us to talk about? Because yeah. we can plan out the entire next seven years of content. <laughs> <laughs> but i want to know what you want to know that's it because so like not as just you what can we want to talk can, about yeah that's right we could go forever on all these different topics so but we would love to know what you you want to hear and we really want to hear from today's episode as well like let's come up with our own versions of the moons what are the names of the different moons and things like that and what are the deities that you honor yeah, yeah. in regards to the moon energy or what traditions or or little mm. things what what is that things? particular thing yeah what, what rituals <laughs> or you know yeah working yeah. what things, things like that that do you do? you do what things do you do basically what stuff <laughs> uh, you're gonna get it you go get it oh, sorry <laughs> personal joke um <laughs> we went british again so anyway guys that's all from all us right. so until next time i hope you all have an amazing week and we'll see you soon see you soon bye